Welcome to this week's Force.comcast, where we're going to be talking about JSON serialization and deserialization for different types within Apex. So, uh, a while back we did a series of videos on doing RESTful APIs uh, with Apex, and we mentioned how good um, the support within Apex for doing um, JSON serialization and deserialization was, um, and how good that uh, support was, and how well Apex deals with just changing and casting between types. So I thought it'd be really good to do a video where we just go through a couple of the sort of stereotypical examples for JSON usage within Apex, um, and then in the next few weeks we're going to build on this to see how we can use this functionality to allow us to get around things such as um, certain governor limits, um, you know, how we can use it to do larger data volumes, and also how we can do things like storing state. So the basis of this is that we've got um, some code here in our JSON examples class, and we've got these different methods we're going to run through one by one. So let's just save this to ensure it's working and it's up there. And what we've got is the first method here is um, a list example. And all we've done is created a list of integers and we've used the json.serializePretty method. So there are two methods we could use here. There's serialize and serialize pretty. We're going to use the pretty one because we're debugging this and we want to be able to view it in a nicer format. Um, and then once we've serialized it, we're just going to debug that out to the console here. We're going to then deserialize it into a new list of integers, and then we're going to compare the two lists to see whether they're equal. So if we just run this example, it'll go away in the background, and this should come back uh, perfectly fine for us. So the reason we're doing a list here is that um, with JSON, JSON is obviously JavaScript object notation. You know, lists are one of the big examples, or arrays as they are in uh, JSON, um, of storing values. And what you can see here is that um, it outputs for us an array of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we've got uh, the, the two uh, examples we've got are equal. So the deserialized version of our list is equal to the original version that we had before serialization. So that's working fine for us, and we're happy with that. So what we've then got is a map example here as the second one. So let's get ready to run that. And in this map example, we're just mapping the uh, digit to the uh, Latin text version of the number. So one to one, two to two, and so on and so forth. And we're just doing exactly the same work here. So what's uh, probably worth going through is talking about how the deserialize method works. So the deserialize method has um, a string that you pass in, which is your JSON string. And then you tell it the type of um, Apex uh, class or the Apex type that you want it to do uh, to deserialize to. So here we're deserializing to a map of strings and strings, and that has a class type because um, map is actually a class in the background within the Apex structure. If you were just doing um, a single string that you wanted to deserialize it to, you could just have this as being string dot class. But because um, Apex is object oriented, we're likely to have something dot class. Um, and obviously, for maps, for lists, for sets, and things like that, they have a particular type which we have to ensure we include in there. Notice that we also cast it here so that when we return it, it's going to come back at the same type. So the JSON deserialize method returns um, an object which we've deserialized our class from, um, deserialized our string to, sorry, um, and it's of this particular type. However, we need to cast it to ensure that we have it passed correctly to this variable that is of this type. If we don't have this in there, um, we can get all sorts of casting errors and it won't work as well for us. And then all we're going to do again here is just check these two maps. So notice we're using the equals equals method here to do the comparison. Um, this will become important further down, but this little piece within the brackets just returns a Boolean value of true or false. So we go away and we, uh, we run the map example, and it will return pretty much the same for us as above. And you can see here that where we've pretty printed it um, using the uh, serialized pretty method, it's printed out line by line, which is quite nice for us to see. And this is just an object in JavaScript um, with the correct keys and um, values. Also notice, however, that um, it doesn't necessarily maintain order. So although our map here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 even, here it's 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. So it's not maintained for definite. So that works fine for us. And let us now go and do uh, an example where we work with an inner class. So I've created a small inner class here that just has a public string, which is some string value, and a private string, which is a hidden value, because obviously we wouldn't be able to access this from outside the class. Um, and in this example, all we're doing is exactly the same code. Um, we're just using this inner class. Um, and you can do this with any sort of custom class type. 
So what's interesting here, however, is when we execute this method, it'll go away and run the background and it will serialize and deserialize uh, for us without any problems at all. What you'll notice is that the values are not equal here. So as I mentioned before, you know, Apex is object oriented. So the map, uh, the list, string, integer, all of these are classes and they have a certain method in them, which is the hash code method and the equals method. So these two methods allow you to do comparison properly. I mentioned these in the last video as well when we were talking about um, sets and lists and how we can uh, cast between those. So if we include some extra code here, which is just an equals method that um, will compare um, a generic object to uh, you know, a particular in a class and return a Boolean, um, then what we can do is we can still use the, we can use this equals equals notation, um, but we can also have it return the correct value. So here we're just saying that the private value of the other object is equal to our private value and same with the string value, which is what we would expect to occur. Um, and if we go back into here, and wait for that to save up and run it, it will then go away and when it's doing the comparison now using the equals equals method, it will then return the correct value of true, as we can see here. So this is quite interesting um, and it's one of the things that uh, the equals method gives you when you're doing your own um, custom classes and custom types. It allows you to use that double equals method of comparison, otherwise um, the system will just return false because it doesn't know how to compare these properly. What we're going to do in some future videos is combine this so that now we know we can use inner classes or we can just use custom classes. We're going to see how we can store state and how we can deserialize and uh, serialize state so that if we want to reinstantiate a controller at a particular point in time uh, with some variables set on it, we could do so. We're also going to go through an example which um, was from the Dreamforce talk I did this year on uh, machine learning with Jennifer Wire. Um, and in that, we used uh, JSON serialization and deserialization to allow us to store large arrays of values really quickly and easily um, and pass them around the system without incurring a big overhead and cost. So um, those will be the uh, videos coming in the future and I hope you look forward to them.